what's up guys um <laughs> oh man i can't stop laughing so um if you're not familiar with a daihatsu midget um actually this is a midget too the original midget was uh three wheels and then i think in 96 this one's a 96 uh the four wheel midgets came out being a midget too. So I thought I would just kind of do a little walk around and show you guys the new, the new addition to the uh, little K, OK Garage family. This thing is just, it's a riot. It's, it, it looks goofy, looks super goofy with the big old bug, bug eye headlights and the front mount spare tire but it is so much fun to drive because you sit in the center <clears throat> it's a one it's a one seater if you're um, manual and it's one and a half seats if you're automatic um, this one is a manual so hi patitos hi um, this one is a one seat because it, it's a manual so let's kind of go over. I'll show you some some funny stuff on this thing. And um, yeah, if you've never seen a midget before, here you go. And the, I honestly, the only place I've really ever seen a midget was back when we used to play Gran Turismo way back in the day. Um, I can't remember when it was Gran Turismo 3 or I can't remember. But they had midgets, Daihatsu midgets in the game and we used to play these things and they were just a crack up I mean they're like 40 50 horsepower or something but yeah this thing <laughs> let's walk around it so here is the Mijot so it's a uh, rear rear wheel drive um, it is a K it is a K class it's a uh, under 660 CC motor very small um, and the engine is actually right up underneath the driver's seat. So let's kind of, let me see. I, okay. So like I said, I just picked this up. So I'm learning stuff about this thing as we, uh, explore the midget world <laughs> and, um, just kind of finding funny little things with this thing. I mean, look at how skinny it is. It's just such a it's the oddest looking K car, but yet it kind of looks like a like a praying mantis or like a or a caterpillar or something. I don't know, man. It's just such a funny car. So I'll give you guys a little backstory on it as we look at it. Um. So here is the 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 dash. So I'm missing the radio, little bezel, the trim bezel. I'm gonna see if I can find that in the auctions, but it's already got a radio in here, which is nice. Here's obviously your brake fluid. Only has a speedometer and a fuel gauge, that's it. So, thank goodness, um, they have an aftermarket uh, water temp gauge installed, so we can keep an eye on the, um, the water temp. There is no control over air. So that's kind of funky. So <clears throat> there's one vent here, one forward facing vent that will blow um, cold air and uh, air conditioning. So not all of them have air conditioning units, but this is the, the air conditioning unit down here. Here's the little front uh, screen, air filter, cabin filter, whatever. So you turn that guy on and it works. It blows really cold air. Um, doesn't really drag the motor at all. It's incredible. Um, all you have is forward facing and your defrost and feet. So defrost and feet turns on the heater. And then obviously this is for air conditioning. And um, there's your fan speed. There's your squirter for the... That's a squirter for the um, windshield wipers, but... There's a squirter on here too. So there's a, there's a lot of funky stuff going on on this thing. Um, it was imported by JDM Car and Motorcycle or JDM Warehouse. I'm sorry, JDM Warehouse in Oregon, I believe. 
Um, so then the guy who got it, you know, he didn't really know a whole lot about it, except for what, you know, they told him. So there's just a lot of funky stuff. Like there's a box up here that controlled something at one time. The wires have been since disconnected. Um, he does have a uh, aftermarket bed light, which is nice. And he also has an aftermarket um, intermittent wiper, which works really good. So that's awesome. Um, let's see, then you have, I don't think that works. I don't even know what it does because it looks like a defroster, but it doesn't do anything when you turn it on. Let's see. Yeah, so I don't think that works anymore. Um, let's see, what else? Cool, what's cool is it got cup holders in here, so I know most K cars have a problem with cup holders. It's got this awesome little cup holder set up here. I mean, it even has this little pocket right here. You could probably put your phone in it. That killed the video. <laughs> but that's a little pocket for your cell phone. And this thing is, this thing's in great condition. Okay, so the heater. Now, this is the funky part. Uh, so the heater actually... So it, it's rigged up to this, this thingy right here. But if you turn it... When it's facing down, that lets the hot air go into the, um, the, uh, man, I'm drawing a blank, heater core. So this is closed and this is open. So as soon as you open that thing, you can see the water temp literally drop in this thing. This thing cools down so quick, obviously, because it's so small. But, uh, that is how you get heat and it actually blows it out of the, blows it out of here because it's, floor and defrost only so that's kind of funky that's your heater because again there's no there's no control over cool air this is just basically whatever the air temperature is um this window on the passenger side is like a dummy window there's no can't roll it down so good luck going through good luck going through uh drive throughs in this car facing forward because you can't roll down your window unless you open up the door which is i guess you could open up the door a little bit grab something maybe so that's kind of funky this the driver door however that does roll down that's normal um let's see what else it okay this is the cool part so uh the guy who bought it um again you know, he was told it was a midget two, uh, which would be a K100P motor. So again, I'm just learning all this stuff. So if I say something incorrect, um, and you're a Daihatsu diehard, uh, you can correct me. But midgets have a K100P engine, which I think they have like 30 horsepower, really small. Um, but this came over to the States with a five speed. So this... And it's already got a cool shift knob, but it's a five speed. So he's just like, oh, cool. You know, someone switched the transmission and put a five speed in here and it's not a four speed anymore. But um, in reality, they did a motor swap and transmission swap with a high jet, which which is the S100P or the S110P. And that has a little more horsepower than the K100P. So this thing books it. And when you're in fifth gear, you're you're doing about 115 kilometers an hour and it's i don't know the rpms but it feels like we're doing about three grand i mean it's just it's cruising this thing just cruises it, it doesn't even feel like it struggles obviously this whole entire car probably weighs 700 pounds or something ridiculous it's just nuts i can pick up the back end and roll it forward that's how how light these things are um so that's really cool. It's got a motor swap in it with a little bit more powerful engine. So that was the tricky part. We couldn't, um, he was trying to find a replacement carburetor. He couldn't find one because it was running weird. Um, blah, 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 long story short. I figured out that it was actually a different carburetor, obviously for an S100P or a high jet. Um, but they couldn't get it to run because it was, uh, he would try to run it in the winter time 
and it wouldn't really fire up. So he took it to a shop and the shop uh, told him that the carb had been rebuilt a few times and it probably needs a new carb. So that's how we swooped in and got it. He wanted, he obviously just wanted to get rid of it because it wasn't running and trying to find a carb and parts was just difficult which it is the, it is difficult to find parts for these things if you don't have the certain connections and knowledge of stuff in japan so i figured you know i'd give it a shot and see if we could get something so yeah scott fusco special case came over yesterday on like on my little shorts uh, we posted uh, <clears throat> us getting it running so I think what happened was is um, they took it apart at the auto shop and I'm not saying anybody did anything wrong this isn't calling anyone out um, I just think some stuff got put back on incorrectly some vacuum lines do not match the vacuum line diagrams of Daihatsu so we kind of did some vacuum line investigating and I drained the gas tank which is a very small gas tank I'm not I'm not even kidding, this thing probably has a six gallon gas tank because I put about three gallons in and it was about half full. So it's a very, very tiny gas tank. Let's see. There it is right there, that little guy. Probably, probably about six gallons. So I put about three gallons in after draining it, ran a bunch of, uh, it's called mechanic in a bottle. This dude at Tractor Supply swore by it. So I threw it in the gas tank got some starter fluid and some choke cleaner uh carb cleaner and just started attacking the carburetor um it was gummy it didn't want to um it would go wide open and then it wouldn't reset itself so again you know it'd been sitting for a long time um so hi konahito got a crowd with me today so the battery was dead we got the battery charged um, and now it's, it's staying charged, which is really nice. I don't have to jump it every single time we're trying to get the thing running. Um, here is the, here's the bed light, which is cool. Uh, I don't, I don't know anything about this guy. I mean, I don't think it's working. I'm not really sure. Again, I just got this thing. So we're, we just wanted to get it running before we did a whole lot to it. I do have um, a factory reverse lamp coming from Japan. That's just like something you'd buy at like AutoZone, it looks like. Um, and we'll do some some 12 inch wheels or something. Right now they're 10s. <laughs> I mean, these are <laughs> 10, 10 inch wheels. Um, yeah, so down here is the coolant reservoir. So you, you take this panel off and you get to your coolant reservoir. Hi, Konohito. Hi, buddy. Um, and then on the other side in that same panel, <clears throat> that's where the uh, battery is. So let's see. Let's kind of, let's go show you where the motor is now. Um, I feel like I was saying a lot of stuff. But anyways, we got it running. I started it up when it was about 20 degrees out this morning. It did take a little fluttering of the gas, but I think we messed up the cold idle screw because um, I didn't have a diagram of the carburetor yesterday, but I got one today and I messed with the cold idle screw and now it will run uh, pretty normal when it's cold. Um, but let's, let's take a look at the engine. So to access the engine, <laughs> which is really funny, you fold the seat down like such. And then there's a wing nut right that goes right there i took it out obviously and then once you get that wing nut out make sure the seat's down here like that then you can lift lift the seat up I'm trying to do this with one hand there's actually a little strap right here let's see so there's a strap that's hanging on your headrest that comes down and it'll hook right there if you still have it, of course. Um, oh, and it's even got a JDM water bottle holder in here, too. All the way from Japan. Probably should look in that and see if there's any... There's something down there, actually. Let's see, what do we got? Uh, I don't know what that is. There's like a piece of metal or something in here. Let's see. Hmm. 
no idea. There's, uh, let's see. I don't know. I'll have to go through that later. Anyway, so here is the engine. Now, how I knew that it was not a midget carburetor, at least, was this choke brake. I think this is called the choke brake right here. Um, this guy on a midget is actually this point part right here is turned in towards the carburetor so every time i was seeing a picture of a midget engine this was turned and i'm like that doesn't make any sense did the auto shop like put it on backwards or something so then i started looking at more and then the high jet came up and i'm like oh this looks exactly like a high jet so what's confusing what's confusing for us um and then i ended up it had a that's actually a kawasaki riding lawnmower uh fuel filter so if you got a midget the kawasaki riding lawnmower for the husky it's actually a husqvarna riding lawnmower but it's made the engine the kawasaki the kawasaki fuel filter fits perfect because i don't know how old that fuel filter was and i just wanted to replace it with an inline fuel filter and that worked out perfect so it's got like this winter and summer i'm pretty sure that says summer and that's winter um, you slide this thing, which takes a little thing inside and shuts this off, which is sucking in, um, I'm assuming hot air coming off of the engine over there on this thing. It's kind of cool because it looks like one of those things that you run up to the front and get some ram air. <laughs> looks like a horn. So that's not typical on the midgets, I'm pretty sure, because I'm pretty sure this is that hose right there that's coming off the exhaust down there runs into here. Um, but obviously they had to switch stuff to fit because it, this is a high jet motor. But what throws me off, so if you're a carburetor expert, this, uh, I think this is a throttle position, like a diaphragm or a pump. The hose is running over here to this, which doesn't make any sense, does not match any diagrams. Very confusing. I'm pretty sure this thing's supposed to be running like over to this or something i don't know it doesn't make sense and then this is just willy-nilly but it does run like i'll start it up right now so we're running and i have the cold idle screw set i wish i had an rvm gauge so i could see what we're idling at but the engine runs there's definitely a vacuum on this thing because it sucks your finger so I just, I don't know where stuff's supposed to be hooked up. There's a random hose down here that's just hanging out. I'm not entirely sure where that's supposed to go to. But like I said, it's running. So I don't know what a lot of those vacuum lines really do if it's running normal. Because like I said, there's no bog. It starts up, it takes, a, it takes a few cranks when it's cold, but it will start up and it will run. And it runs real real nice idles right back down and is solid idle so not really sure what those vacuum lines do i'm not a carburetor expert but you know like i said we just attacked it and tried to get it running um so Let's see what else. That's that there in the center is the mechanical fuel pump. So I actually heard a lot of those going out. So I was going to order one of those, but when we were pumping it, I did notice the fuel filter filling up with fuel. So obviously it was. Oh, hi, Konehito. <laughs> Konehito random. Hi, buddy. Hi. Hi. This dude's like wild. I don't know where he came from, but he hangs out over our house now. Um forget what i was oh, there he is right there it's going to eat though uh but yeah that's the mechanical fuel pump which was working because the fuel filter obviously was filling up with uh fuel um i got cap and wires and rotors and all that stuff coming and this was another thing so there's this blue wire right here now it was just floating willy-nilly down here it wasn't touching anything i noticed that was kind of weird it looked and it had like the eyelet on the end, so it looked like it was supposed to be grounded. It's a typical, you know, something that's grounding. It's supposed to be grounding. Wasn't touching anything. 
So it wasn't really running. It wouldn't stay running, I should say. It would, we'd have to keep throttling it, throttling it to keep it running, and then it would die. And I'm like, you know, I'm talking to Scott, and we're trying to figure it out. I'm like, I wonder if this blue wire's gotta be grounded or something. As soon as I touched it on, you know, the screw here to ground to the frame, I'm pretty sure that's the ground, might be the ground for the carb solenoid, because every time I touched the frame, something would click that looks like the carb solenoid on this carburetor. Again, I'm used to sandbars, and I know what the carb solenoid looks like on a sandbar. Um, I'm assuming they kind of all look the same, and it looks like the one on the sandbar. As soon as I grounded it, she stayed running, like cherry. So I just took that blue wire that I don't know what it did, grounded it, and um, it's running. I mean, it's running amazing. Although we did have an issue yesterday. And what's crazy is it's got a fill here for <laughs> coolant. And then once you take the spare tire off the front, let's see. So here's the spare tire. Once you get the spare tire mount off, let's see. Ugh. We have new new patitos so you can probably hear him chirping in the background now you can't see him unless you took the the wheel off but there's also another radiator fill directly on top of the radiator radiator behind the spare tire but here's the, here's the spare tire so it'd be kind of cool if we got some nice wheels and then put a nice wheel on up here on the spare which now that I think about it, may not fit because it might be a little bit bigger unless we kept a uh, tire, the same tire tire diameter size with slightly bigger wheels. But it's got the little cool like front chrome bar, so we'll put like some JDM fog lights on it, yellow the lights out like your typical little JDM car. They actually make California mirrors for this thing, so I'll look into those. Um, Pollito. And then let's see here. The, let's go look at the little patitos. They're they're only like two weeks old, and they're already twice, three times as big as they were when we took them home. I cannot wait for summer because this grass needs to start growing big time. Hi, patitos. Hi, guys. Woo! Hi, patitos. You want to jump out of there, huh? Hey. Put a little rock in there so they have something to stand on there you go but i'll take them out for a couple hours let them play in the pool and then i'll take them back inside and then they can hang out in the heat lamp yeah man that is such a cool looking little car so if you're in the market for a daihatsu midget two um i'm gonna have you know i'm gonna start putting a bunch of videos up on the Daihatsu fixing, you know, simple tune-ups. It did have, the guy who owned it before me um, did have a timing belt kit done and tensioner, so that's really nice that that's already done. Um, but I'm gonna do an oil change and all that good stuff. But I mean, underneath this thing, there's no rust. Let's see, I don't wanna, very clean. Muffler's a little wonky, but that's okay because we're gonna do this. We're gonna get rid of that huge heavy muffler. I mean that pipe. Look how thick that pipe is. That what muffler's gotta weigh like a hundred pounds. But I think what we're gonna do is have the muffler disconnect this heater hose because it's not working anymore. It's not going to anything. And then we're gonna have a kick out right before the front tire, have a little front tire dump, whatever and they make a header for the S100 or the high jet. So we'll put a header and we'll do exhaust on this thing and lower it and just get silly with this thing. Cause it's such a silly, silly truck for sure. But there she is. Oh yeah, I forgot. So just in case you forget how to drag a stick shift. So, <laughs> Fun story. I'll walk around. I got it running yesterday, so I got all excited. Drove it over to my parents' house down the street, and 
I said, Dad, drive it. Take it around. This thing's a lot of fun. So he takes it for a drive, and he comes back, and it starts smoking. And I'm like, oh, great. The heater, you know, blew a coolant line or something, and we're smoking. But I look down. This line right here was glowing bright red and, like, just melting. So the switch, I believe, this brake switch is bad. And possibly... I'm hoping it's a bad brake switch. So I bought a new one on Amazon, just like a kind of a universal one that looked exactly the same as this. And I'll test that. But we did notice, there's the fuse box. That red fuse right there, that 10 amp, it was popped. And we thought maybe that was for the, um, the cooling fan because the cooling fan wasn't kicking on on this thing. So I don't know if the cooling fan's not working on this thing but we really haven't gotten it that hot for it to kick on. So I'm not sure, quite entirely sure what temperature it's supposed to kick the fan on. So I might have to rig up a switch and just manually turn that on if it's not firing. But I think that fuse had popped before I replaced it because of this. And then that new fuse I put in there, which was the same 10 amp or 10, I think it's 10 amp, um, didn't pop and this thing just completely melted and just about probably burned the car down so thank goodness i i quickly reached down here and thank goodness there's this plug right here unplugged it and obviously it stopped stopped melting so i can't imagine if i wasn't able to unplug that i don't know what i would have done <laughs> so there's just a lot of wires going on in here a lot of wires obviously from the radio i mean there's just so much rat's nest. This thing right here, <sighs> be interesting to see uh, what the heck is going on with this thing, wire-wise. But, yeah, that's the uh, Daihatsu, <laughs> Daihatsu Midget 2. 96 to 99 is when they were uh, produced these ones. It's a K100P if you have a K100P motor in it. Um, this is a S100 or S110P motor in it. Um, I'm not entirely sure how to tell the difference. I wish I had a VIN from a high jet so I could try to find parts with a VIN, but I just have to go off of uh, S100 or S100P. But yeah, such a cool, cool little car. I, I think it's the craziest looking K car out there and one to definitely have in your collection if you if you collect the little k cars and we might they make over fenders it's very hard to do this backwards they make over fenders right there so we might do some over fenders in the back so it kind of matches the front just kind of makes it a little racy but yeah for the price i got it for not running i couldn't pass it up it was it was, even if it didn't run, it would just be a cool giant paperweight. So we had to get it. So definitely props <laughs> to the guy who sold it to me. If he ever watches this, thank you so much for selling that thing and uh, letting us take a crack at it and get it running. Um, but she's, she's happy. So anyways, thanks guys for watching. Thanks for checking out the midget. We'll have some videos up soon doing some hopefully headers and exhausts and getting hectic with this thing. And yeah, awesome. Take it easy, guys. <laughs> oh, the midget is alive. What? Right to the right. To the right. All right, hold on. Hold on. Okay. We took the uh, front spare off and everything. That's why she looks a little different. <laughs> oh man, I'm so excited, so pumped.